Good afternoon and welcome to the 2019 Division I Women's Soccer Selection Show. I'm your host, Will Haskett. It is one of the most exciting championships in all of college sports, and it begins today. We learn the matchups and the journey all heading towards San Jose. 64 teams begin that quest today with first round games upcoming this weekend. The NCAA Women's Soccer Committee worked hard over the last several days to identify these 64 teams, focusing mainly on both overall and non-conference schedule, as well as significant wins and losses. The RPI was used, but mainly as a starting point to look at those 64 teams. We'll take those 64, play down to four teams with the semifinals coming up on December the 6th, and the championship showdown two days later at Avaya Stadium. Will Florida State be there to keep the title, or will a new program add its name to the list of past champions? Those are questions for then. Right now, we want to find out who's in, who's out, and where everybody is headed. We dive into the bracket where the top seed in the tournament belongs to Stanford. The quest for back-to-back -back championships ended in a semifinal loss a year ago, but the Cardinal may be front runners for a title again this season. And it would be fitting to get it done for senior Katarina Macario, who will leave the program as one of the best ever to wear the Stanford uniform. She just set the season and career records for assists, ranking first in the country with 18. She also leads the nation in goals with 23. Stanford outscored Pac-12 opponents 41-4 and are riding a 38-match home unbeaten streak into the tournament. Stanford will look to run that streak to 39 against Prairie View, SWAC champions in the tournament for just the second time. Hofstra captured the Colonial title and returns for the third straight year, hosting Missouri Valley champion Loyola in a first round matchup. An at-large berth comes with hosting duties for Arizona, where the Wildcats make three straight NCAA tournaments for the first time in program history. And they host a team that's about to jump for joy as TCU gets an at-large berth to extend their own tournament streak to four straight. There was no dramatic wait for Stony Brook in via the American East title, earning a trip and the fourth seed in this quarter of the bracket. That's Penn State, the Big Ten champs. For an eighth time, the Nittany Lions have won nine straight matches entering the tournament, outscoring opponents 18-6 in that stretch to close out the Big Ten conference season. All right, the three seed in this quarter of the bracket belongs to Arkansas, a program that continues to rise. The Razorbacks make their fourth straight NCAA tournament after a run to the SEC championship. And while a 1-0 loss to South Carolina stings coming in, this may be the deepest team coach Colby Hale has ever had. Arkansas sports four wins over ranked opponents this season and 21 different players have registered a point. Conference USA champion North Texas heads to Fayetteville the third straight trip to the tournament. NC State's program resurgence continues with a fourth straight trip to the NCAA tournament, battling Patriot League winner Navy in the first round. Louisville posts back-to-back -back tournament berths for the first time in over a decade, led by Amina Ekic, who tops the team in assists, goals, and points. She'll be targeted by A-Sun champ Lipscomb, who head north for a first-round showdown. Boise State posted 18 wins en route to the Mountain West Championship in just the second NCAA tournament in program history. That earns the team a date with the two seed in this quarter of the bracket, and that belongs to BYU. The West Coast Conference champs sport the second most potent offense in the country, averaging over three and a half goals per game. It is the first time the Cougars went through the regular season undefeated, outscoring opponents 60 to eight. Elise Flake has 17 of those goals and will look for more. A lot must happen for this team to advance to the national quarterfinals. And it's a one game at a time philosophy, but what a showdown it could be with Stanford if they make it all the way there. An explosive 1-2 offensive must-watch game. All right, to the next quarter of the bracket and another two seed to unveil that is awarded to UCLA. 23rd appearance for the 2013 national champions who have made it to the national semifinals 10 times in program history. A closing victory over Southern Cal has provided a spark heading into the postseason. Ashley Sanchez added two assists to her now career record for the Bruins. She's top 10 in the country in distribution this season. The Bruins welcome Southland champ Lamar to Los Angeles in the opening round. Clemson hasn't missed a tournament in seven years, keeping the streak alive in 2019 to welcome Vanderbilt for a first round matchup. Duke had the benefit of a brutal ACC schedule where the Blue Devils played seven different opponents to a draw this year with a top 30 defense. They will have a lot in common with another team squeezing in with an at-large. Breathe easy, Utah. You are back in for the first time since 2016, surviving a tough Pac-12 schedule. 
Milwaukee rolled through the Horizon League with the country's best goalkeeper. Elaine Lamaccia's 926 save percentage was the best in the nation, and she will need to be stout in goal against third-seeded Wisconsin. The Badgers were undefeated in the Big Ten regular season before being upset by Purdue in the tournament. That, no doubt, has them refocused for a championship push. All right, out west now, Washington is back in the tournament for the first time since 2014 and earned the four seed in this quarter of the bracket. While all that may be reason for celebration, winning the Apple Cup Series showdown against Washington State for the first time in 15 seasons may be the biggest celebration so far this year. Summer Yates scored the game's only goal for Washington. Short drive for WAC champ Seattle, who will be the first round opponent. After missing the tournament for the first time in 16 years last year, the 1998 national champs from Florida returned to the bracket, hosting the champs from the American Athletic South Florida. Big reason for Brown comes with a home game, big season I should say, a memorable year for the Bears. Undefeated through the Ivy League and owners of some impressive non-conference wins, Brown makes the tournament for the first time since 1994. That was before anybody in the current roster was born. 32 goals scored by the Bears this year are the most in over a decade, and the team is 14-0-1 when scoring first, which makes an interesting matchup with Monmouth, which leads the nation in shutout and save percentage this year. One goal may be enough in this opening round battle. Sunbelt winner South Alabama will likely need more than one goal if they're not going to get past the champs because Florida State slots in here, another one seed off the board. The reigning champs will put a tough fight against anybody in this tournament if they're going to give up the trophy. All five losses for the Knolls this season have come against top five ranked opponents nationally. And to be the best again, they will have to beat the best. Dana Castellanos leads the way with 11 goals this season. She is one of 10 players on the team with two or more goals this year. All right, we are halfway home in our unveiling of the 64 teams. And for those nervously waiting, we'll drag out the drama just a bit more, back in just a bit to fill out the rest of the field. Every time you show up, every time you make your loyalties clear, whether you're holding out hope or confident, pumped up, or at a loss for words, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game, and they make history. December 6th and 8th in San Jose, California. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash Women's College Cup to get your tickets today. Welcome back to the Division I Women's Soccer Selection Show. Defending champion, or I should say, defending champion Florida State earning a number one seed. Stanford also another one seed with... Florida State on that side of the bracket. Time to unveil the second half of the bracket and our third one seed, a much deserved honor, comes to Virginia. The Cavaliers enter the tournament arguably as the best program without a national title, but this feels like the year that the stars could finally align. An undefeated regular season was made possible by a stingy defense ranking second in the country in goals allowed. Virginia has outscored opponents 58 to eight this season. Big South Conference champ Radford will try and spoil the championship plans for the Cavaliers in the opening round. Washington State makes its 13th NCAA tournament where Morgan Weaver will look to stay active offensively. The leading scorer will get a tough test from Memphis, an at-large berth for the program's first back-to-back -back appearances since, since 2011. Georgetown has made the College Cup two of the last three years, so beware of the Hoyas, who are still stinging a bit after losing in the Big East Championship. That will certainly motivate the effort against West Virginia, which has made every tournament since the program's very first back in 2000. Welcome back, Central Connecticut State, which won the Northeast, earning a trip to fourth-seeded Rutgers. Keeper Megan McClellan is top five in the country in shutouts posted this season for a team that ranked 20th in goals against. This is the eighth straight NCAA tournament appearance for the Scarlet Knights, where they were semifinalists back in 2015. Solid defense could very well get them back to the College Cup this year. For the first time since 2004, Kansas has made back-to-back -back tournaments, and they arrived not only as Big 12 champs, but a three seed as well for the reward. It was the first Big 12 title in program history, besting TCU 1-0, and you can still hear the party taking place in Lawrence. And that will be where the game takes place with first round matchup Iowa. The Hawkeyes at large berth gives them just their second ever tournament appearance. Virginia Tech is next, earning hosting duties against Xavier. Owners of an incredible program turned around from one Big East win just a couple of seasons ago to conference champions this year. 
Notre Dame has won three national titles, but had to sit at home and watch the entire tournament last year, missing it for the first time since 1992. The Irish return this year, however, and they will host A-10 champion St. Louis in the first round. Samford won the Southern Conference and is rewarded with a trip to second-seeded South Carolina. Phenomenal defense all season long for the Gamecocks, who have the second-best scoring defense, ranking nationally in the top 10 in shutouts and save percentage. All right, final 16 teams to go, beginning with our final two seed, and that is awarded to Southern Cal. The women of Troy have won it all twice, including not so long ago in 2016. And some of the seniors on this roster were freshmen back then, would love to book in their careers with national titles. Plenty of talent on this team, and it was certainly tested in the Pac-12 portion of the schedule, but health may be the biggest concern entering the tournament. Leading scorer Tara McCown and senior captain Jalen Woodward each missed the last match of the season against UCLA. So perhaps there's an opening for those in the early rounds against the Trojans. Does that mean there's an opening perhaps for Cal State Fullerton? The Big West champs certainly hope so. Texas A&M first made the tournament in 1995, and this year marks 25 consecutive births, going half a century without missing the tournament. A potent offense has a solid one-two punch up front for the Aggies. Allie Watt ranks in the top 10 nationally in points and goals per game, while her teammate, Amanda Lopez, is top five in assists. In rhythm, this is a very dynamic and fun group to watch. There will be zero animosity or rivalry, you would imagine, when Texas comes to town. Former conference foes now matched up to start this postseason. Santa Clara won it all in 2001, returns for the 28th time to host Cal, making its 26th appearance after missing the field a season ago. South Dakota State features the nation's best save percentage in goal and a top five scoring defense, which always travels well, and will head to Oklahoma State. The Cowgirls missed the tournament last season, but returned triumphantly after a big season. A semifinal loss in the Big 12 tournament came with the fastest scored goal in Big 12 tournament history. Gabriella Coleman scored just 65 seconds in, but Oklahoma State could not hold the lead and then lost in absolutely brutal fashion in the final minutes of overtime. Maybe hearing their name today is good enough consolation. Eight teams to go now. We hope you're tuned in from the Texas Tech Club because for the seventh time in program history, Texas Tech is in. Tech's resume for postseason inclusion boasts 15 wins, just two off of the national lead. The Red Raiders have two ranked wins, and they tied a program record for the most wins in Big 12 play this year with six of them. The opponent will be Pepperdine, who is back in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2017. Moving down the bracket, next up is Michigan, who earns an at-large after falling 2-1 in overtime to Penn State in the Big Ten Tournament Final. The Wolverines are making their 14th appearance in the NCAA Tournament and the first since 2016. Their opponent will be the MAC regular season and tournament champions, swept this year by Bowling Green. Four teams remain, and we now welcome Colorado to the tournament. Buffs 11 wins on the season, making their 11th NCAA appearance in the first since missing out a year ago. Colorado will host a school. Not too far away, Northern Colorado heads to town. Head coach Tim Barrera and the Bears automatically qualified for their second trip to the tournament after winning the Big Sky in, back in 2015. Barrera also guided the Bears to the NCAA tournament twice before the program reclassified to the Division I ranks. Finally, final matchup. Belmont and North Carolina will make the 2019 bracket complete. Belmont winners of the OVC making the trip to the NCAA tournament for just the second time in program history. And for North Carolina, the Tar Heels, of course, owners of 21 national championships, the most storied program in the sport, and almost got 22 a season ago, coming up a goal shy against conference foe Florida State in the championship. The Tar Heels enter the tournament off a thrilling double overtime win over Virginia to capture the program's 22nd conference title. Alessia Russo was the hero, earning tournament MVP honors with the game-winning goal. Claudia Dickey is the keeper, surrendering the fewest goals of any keeper this year in the country. All right, there you have it, all 64 teams who are still alive in pursuit of a national championship. Now, you make sure you check right back here on NCAA.com for updated results and news throughout the entire tournament. Make sure you tune in as well. The national semifinals taking place on December the 6th, the national championship on December the 8th, all coming to you from San Jose, California, and Avaya Stadium. You can catch 2019 College Cup on ESPNU. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Congratulations and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. Every time you show up, 
every time you make your loyalties clear. Whether you're holding out hope, or confident, pumped up, or at a loss for words, however you choose to be a fan, you make the game. And they make history. December 6th and 8th in San Jose, California. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash Women's College Cup to get your tickets today.